So, you bought one of these. You want to be safe. Good idea. Want to know how to mount it. Can't quite figure out how to wire it. This does, doesn't look like any conventional switch that maybe you've ever seen before. Going to walk you through it step by step. Coming up. I'm Roger. Welcome to the shop. Well, what I'm going to talk about here is a PowerTech. I think it's a 71007 switch, paddle switch, right here. You push a little green button to turn it on, and you push the red one there. To uh, people have seem to have a problem with uh, hooking this up. Wiring is actually pretty straightforward. Where, where they run into a problem is trying to mount it. Uh, I'll get uh, close up here in a minute and we'll get into some extreme details on it. But the, the way it comes, you can't really mount it. You're going to need a few things. Uh, one thing, obviously, you're going to need is a box for the back. So a friend of mine bought one of these, weatherproof box. Looks nice. Well, the switch kind of fits in there, but the box isn't deep enough. The reason being, the switch itself is... You need at least two inches of depth. So, what are your options? Uh, switch box, like this. Find a good way to mount it. This is three and a half inches deep. Yes, it'll fit in that, and yes, it'll work. Another option, and this is what I use on my equipment around here, for the, with the exception of my joiner. Uh, table saw, the router table, my miniature router table. This is what I do. This is a four-inch square box two and one eighth inches deep. Now obviously you can't just stick this on there because that isn't going to work. This is called a plaster ring in the trade. Remember I was an electrician, I know these things. So this is a plaster ring. This one here happens to be have a looks like half inch uh, raise on it. They're available flat and a flat one will work. Of uh, quarter inch half inch, uh, quarter, three eighths, half, five eighths, three quarter, and I think you can even get a one inch. What this does is this mounts onto the box like so and then your switch will mount into this like so and we'll get into the details on that because the hardware that comes with it isn't going to work to mount it onto the ring or the box or pretty much anything. It's kind of a hokey thing the way they send it but uh, I'll get the camera zoomed in down here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so what are we going to need to hook this up? Uh, obviously you're going to need your box and your ring, whether it be the uh, four inch square, two and an eighth deep with a plaster ring on it, or if you have a three and a half inch deep switch box. Um, either way, either one will work. Obviously you're going to need your wires, line in, line out. We'll get to the details on that in a minute. The uh, You're going to need a couple of 632 machine screws, uh, inch and a quarter long, because the uh, screws that come with this are not long enough. Let's see if I can get in here where we can see this. If you look right here, there's a little nut on the back, and you got your screw here. Well, that's obviously not long enough to really do anything. So, uh, first things we're going to do is take those out. And that one fell on the floor, but I don't care. I don't want it. And that leaves you with this component. Leaves you with this component right here, which is a switch mechanism. Uh, black is the start. Get this under the camera. The black is the start. The red is the stop. And as you look at it, the black is the top. As you look at the back, if you look very closely, and I don't even know if this will focus in on that, you'll see that it's written here, line and load. So your line cord will be coming in on this side, your power coming in, and your load going out to your tool or whatever you're controlling will be on this side. And the wires will mount on these little screws. We'll show you how we do that here in just a minute. So once you get that disassembled, you'll be able to uh, do the wiring and I'll show you how we're going to mount it here in a second. Okay, now to wire it. Got a couple scrap pieces of cord here. And what we're going to be using are ring terminals. What is a ring terminal? 
This is a ring terminal and it's made for uh, 16 to 14 gauge wire. This happens to be number 16 here. Uh, another option is what's called a fork right here. I prefer not to use these because if something should come loose, the fork could fall out. Uh, anybody that works, electrician that works in switch gear and stuff and around uh, critical loads, you never use forks. So I'll be using rings. So what you want to do is strip this back. Well, that's some tough stuff there. This is SJO heavy duty cord. And after you uh, strip them, give the wires a good twist. Get them good and tight. You can slip your terminal on. Now that needs to be crimped. Uh, I've seen people just take a pair of pliers and squeeze it. That's not a good crimp. There's a lot of different tools around to do it with. Um, some of the, well, here's a, uh, this is a Klein stripper, crimper combination. That's one option, and you would crimp it up here in the nose. Another option, um, this is a cheapie here. That same thing, though, up in the nose. Right up here is where you would be crimping it. Another common tool, this one's made by T&B. They also, Klein also makes it, a lot of the companies make it. You put it into the, uh, the slot here, and you give it a squeeze, and that's crimped. Another option, if you happen to have one or know somebody that has one, is a compression crimper like this. Here you would set the terminal in, bring this down, you squeeze it till it clicks, and you have an absolute perfect crimp. And if you're working at a nuclear plant, you have to use to get this into the camera. You have to use this type. I'm looking into a monitor, and everything's in a mirror image, so I'm having quite a time with that. I'm not used to the mirror image thing. Okay, so then on your load side, you'll be doing the same thing. Don't forget to twist those wires because it keeps you from having any little whiskers that would be sticking out somewhere. And these are color coded. Now you can see the color dots on there. This is for the blue you use the center. I had another one laying here somewhere. Well, nope, got plenty of them. When you do stick your terminal in, make sure, absolutely sure, there's no little whiskers sticking out the back. Okay, again, as you look at the back of this switch, your line is on this side over here. So you just take out this little machine screw that's in there, and try not to lose it because it'll be something metric and you won't have. Uh, there's no real polarity, you just need to be consistent. So for, I'm going to put the black on the top. I'll put the white on the bottom. Show you this little trick right here. A lot of people can't figure out how to get these screws started back on. Stick your screwdriver in the head of the screw, put the screw through the terminal, and put your finger over the end of it. That way you can bring it over to the terminal and it lines right up and you're not dropping things. Old electrician's trick. You know, we'll do the same thing with the load side. And since on the line we put the black on the top, on the load, we're going to do the same thing. Don't lose the screw.
Okay, so there we have it. I'll go over this again. This side here, and it is marked on the back, line, got black and white. This here is the load, black and white. So you're running straight through. You don't want to bring your line in here and your load out there because as soon as you turn this on, you're going to have dead short. So don't do that. Another thing you want to make sure you do, and I'm not going to do it here because this is just scraps, is make sure you bond your grounds to the box. There is a... Try to show this here. See this little raised spot in the back of the box? That takes a 1032 screw. That's where you put your ground wire. Okay, so imagine that this is, of course, this here is just plastering. Imagine it's in the box for purposes of this demonstration. You would pass your wires through there and back into the box. Of course, your grounds would be landed on the back of that box. So, with this being the top, remember the black is the top. Now you've got this piece to put on. Get rid of that. If you look at the back, there's... Let me get this under the camera yet. If you look at the back, there's a plate there. Um, that is uh, part of the mounting and how this works. So it's like a reinforcement back there. Don't take that off. So you would put that over the top of your switch and show these slots here. Maybe. Okay, these slots, your buttons need to go into that slot with a red one down here at the bottom by the red part of the plastic. And this can be a little bit maddening sometimes. Trying to get everything lined up. Then you'll take your 632 by inch and a quarter machine screw, pass it through the plastic housing, pass it through the switch, Everything's easier said than done, especially when you're trying to do it for a demonstration. Get that started there. You could probably get by with a one inch screw, but I like using the inch and a quarter. It gives you a little bit of uh, fudge room and a place to look. So you'll need to get everything lined up on the bottom one too. And when you're done, it'll look like that. Start, stop. And if you do not want this little bit of part that's raised, I didn't have a, uh, a flat plaster ring here. I would have used that. Uh, you can also turn this plaster ring over the other way and have the, the flat side out, and then this would set flush against the metal, uh, like you see here, like I've done on my table saw. Okay, once again, this was just for a demonstration. Um, one thing you don't want to do if you are going to use a switch box like this, if you look at this, how these stick out, you may need to do this to allow clearance past the sides when you go to put this into the box. Uh, it doesn't hurt anything. You definitely don't want to do that with a shallow box because it'll hit the back of the box. You'll end up shorting against the box. That's a uh, so view of the back. Back round of the front. Start. Stop. Just like that. And that's how you wire up and mount the PowerTech. I think it's a 71007 or 71004. It'll, it'll be in the title, whatever it is. That's... Uh, how you wire and mount the switch. And I hope you got something out of that and I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, we always appreciate getting a thumbs up on our videos. And 
course, always looking for subscribers. And next to that subscribe button is a little bell. If you click that bell, you'll be notified when I post another video. Otherwise, I'm Roger in the shop. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching.